And so, Father, today I, I just pray that, that somehow or other you would ignite something on the inside of every, every one of us that would cause us to rise above the fears and the doubts and the concerns and the shame and the pain. And, Lord, we'd be able to boldly confess and speak about you. But, Lord, also we'd be able to boldly become before the throne of grace and, and just allow you to do that redemptive work in our lives. And for that, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. See, without the redemptive work of the cross of Calvary, we are dead people walking. The Bible says in Ephesians 2.1, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Without the infilling of the Holy Spirit and fire. How many people want the Holy Spirit and fire? Without the infilling of the Holy Spirit and fire, we are like unexploded bombs that have never gone off. Useless as an ashtray on the motorcycle. Bombs that have never gone off, never fulfilled their purpose, the plan, their destiny. A lot of us can be like that. I want to say this, it's never too late. I'm, a, I'm encouraged by Caleb, and different ones like that, Abraham. You see, our destiny is to be filled with the fullness of God. That's what it says in Ephesians 3.19. To be filled with the fullness of God. Father, I pray that you will ignite something on the inside of us. That, you'll, that we would burst into flame. Lord, that passion, desire would rise within us, my God. We wouldn't just... Talk out of knowledge, but my God, out of passion to see people come to you and to know you. And for that, we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory. It says in Ephesians 1.19, it says, And what is the exceeding? Everybody say exceeding. Exceeding greatness. It's not just a little blimp. It's not just a little touch. But it's an exceeding greatness that God wants us to understand that His power isn't just a little dribble. It's not just a little 9-volt battery where you can hardly feel it. This morning as I was having a shower, I must have a little cut in my hand, and as I went to turn the tap, I felt a little shocked. How many people have ever felt that? It's not just that, but it's exceeding greatness. And what is this exceeding greatness of His power towards us who believe According, not according to what you think, not according to what you've been told perhaps in the past, but according to the working of His mighty power that is working in us. You see, this whole show is God's show. This is not a man-made thing. This is a God thing. It's something that God wants to do. And he wants more than anything else to empower his church. He wants his church to rise up. He wants his church to know him, to know the power of his resurrection. He doesn't want us sitting around like an unexploded bomb, just taking up space. He wants us to do what he wants us to do. God is working mightily in us. The Word of God is working mightily in us. The Holy Spirit is working mightily in us. The exceeding greatness of His power. And if you meditate on that, just sitting in your car, whatever you're doing, doing the dishes, and just start to meditate on that and start to think about that, this exceeding greatness of His power that's been poured out into us. Once you start to understand and start to realize and start to allow it to work in you, and then you begin to rise above the negative thoughts, wrong concepts that get into our mind. How many people know that we can be full of wrong thinking? 
And if we think wrong, we will act wrong. If we think wrong, we'll live wrong. But if we can somehow or other get hold of the Word of God, and this Bible was not written because God had nothing to do one Sunday afternoon. He wrote it down for our example, for our admonition to, to stir us. Also, we know our God and we know His purpose and we know His plan for our life. And God wants to fill us with His fullness. Jesus walked on this planet in the fullness of God, the power of God. And Jesus said, these things that I do, I want you to do also. And even greater things than this shall you do. But you see, if I think wrong, I'll act wrong. You know, if I act wrong, I'll get the wrong result. And then somehow or other it becomes part of our lifestyle that God wants to change. What is the exceeding greatness of His power towards us who believe according to the working of His mighty power, which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His own right hand in heavenly places? Only God, only the Word, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit can produce this in us. And I'll say this, that God wants to produce something in us. He doesn't want a failure. He doesn't want people that, that don't know Him. He wants to produce something on the inside of Him. How many people want God to produce something on the inside of you? Why don't you just lift up your hand and say, God, I want you to help me. I want you to... because. The exceeding greatness of your power is towards me. It's coming towards me, and it wants to ignite something on the inside of me. It wants me to realize who I am. The exceeding greatness of His power that He worked. God is working mightily in us. You see, today, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father. This is the highest honor that God could ever give anybody. Jesus sitting at His right hand. I want, you to, I want to read a scripture to you today. It's found in uh, Revelation chapter 5. And as we just look at this position that, that Jesus came to, as God raised him from the dead by His Spirit and then brought him through and ushered him in. It wasn't just like me sitting beside Nancy here. It wasn't just another day. It just wasn't another thing. But this, if I can just in my imagination try to comprehend what it was like, what it was like. You know, we had a funeral yesterday, a Friday, and, and I, I spoke there and I said that Irene heard those words, enter in thy good and faithful servant as Jesus ushered her over the threshold that took her into eternity. And they're words, and they seem like words, but if we could only comprehend on the inside of our imagination could even just go out beyond to, to what it was like to walk in through that door into eternity. This, as Jesus came and as He sat down, where did He sit? And it says here in verse 11, and says, Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels about the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands upon thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth, such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him 
who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. And as I started to read these scriptures, I started to understand the, and comprehend a little bit about God and His Son. And there's, there's, there's nothing there that, that says, I am the greater one. When Jesus came and sat by Him, and, and, and the people came and they began to cry out, honor and worthy and blessed, and, and started to talk about how great this Jesus is. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And my mind went back to Saul when Saul was there and David, young David, who slew a Goliath. And, and as, as they, the women started to sing, uh, Saul has uh, slaughtered his thousands, but David is ten thousands. And what rose up in that man, he got, began to get envious, jealous. But here's God. Here is God on His throne and He invites His Son, the highest honor that anybody could ever have. And He says, come and sit beside me, Son. Come and sit here. And, then they, they, and, and as, they, as He sits there, holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. No, I'm sorry. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Blessing and honor and glory and power to Him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Amen. Do you believe that today? What an amazing God we serve. What an amazing Savior. Our God and, and the Son of, of God, he was, here He is sitting there in heavenly places. This Son became a man. He left the portals of glory and he became a man. He identified himself with you, the human race. Came down here as a man and identified himself with the human race. He delivered the human race from Satan's authority. We've got to know that. You've got to know the redemptive work of the cross of Calvary. And carried his own blood into the holy of holies to make possible eternal, re re eternal redemption for mankind. Anybody here thankful for that? And he made it so simple. Made it so very, very simple. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How simple. Then he sat, sat down with his dad. I thank God for an imagination. I thank God that you've got to sit. You just can't read the Bible and just read it. You've got to put yourself in the pictures. You've got to put yourself in the story. You've got to let your emotions go out. And you've got to, as John was, was seeing these great visions... And he wrote it down for our admonition so as that we can draw from it and glean from it. So we can capture something. The magnitude, the, the majesty, the glory. 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands upon thousands. Man. Jesus paid the price and he carried his own blood took it right into the Holy of Holies and redeemed mankind. He set us free. Then he went and sat down with his dad. He did it for me. He died for me. But now he lives for me. Now we have a man. Oh, shut up, woman. Now we have a man. I want you to know we've got a man sitting at the right hand of God the Father. I've got a man. Oh, glory, that's an amazing thing. And I see my man. I see him there seated in all the pomp and ceremony. But the reason that he's there is to re represent you and me. He's there to represent me, interceding for us.
The devil tries to condemn you. Tries to say bad things. But immediately, Jesus rises up and says, Not so. I pay that on the cross of Calvary. See, you, you've got to hear him say that. It's one thing to hear a sermon. It's one thing to hear a message. But it's something to hear. He is the song in my head. He is the voice calling my name. He is that one. Amen. He is that one. Not so. Neil is redeemed. Washed in the blood. The fact that he is seated there is the seal of our acceptance. You know why? Because we're seated with him. Do you believe that today? I'm seated with him today. I want to tell you having Jesus at the right hand of God the Father. David, what an amazing thing. The enemy comes, the accuser of the brethren comes to accuse you, David. But Jesus says, no, that's my boy. <laughs> hey, that's my boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, he skinned his knees a few times. Yeah, he's gone up a few dry gullies. <laughs> but that's my boy. I want to tell you, that's better than having some $2,000 an hour lawyer on your side. Amen. My man. That's my man. That's my son. One of my kids. He's there on our behalf. The fact that he is seated there is the seal of our redemption. It says in Ephesians 1 3 is Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Not only are we seated with Christ in the highest position in the universe? Think of it. Think of it. Think of it. We're seated in the highest place, in the highest honor in the universe. That's better than having cucumber sandwiches with the Queen of England. We're seated with Him. But we are also blessed with every spiritual blessing. Everything that you need to maintain our place as joint heirs with Jesus, sons and daughters, has already been given to you. You believe that today? In Galatians 3.13, it says Jesus became a curse for us. Why? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Saved, born again, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Praise God for that. Amen. I want you to have a quick look with me in the book of Deuteronomy. I want to talk a little bit about blessing. And I want to also share a little bit. A lot of times we get around people that perhaps are negative. People that might say words like this. I've tried that. Didn't work. I've counseled people when I've talked simple talk. Trying to help them to break out of and break, come into. And they look at you and they say, I've done that. Tried that. Didn't work. A lot of people get in amongst groups of people like that that have really haven't found the whole answer. 
Deuteronomy 28, it says this, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all His commandments that I have commanded you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. I just want to just quickly just go over this a little bit. And it shall come to pass if you diligently. Friend, this is not some flip-flop thing. It's not something with, Hello, Jesus. There's, there's got to come a commitment. There's got to come more than just, if you want to, you can. If God wants to, He knows where I live. Don't talk to God like that. But if you diligently, if you sincerely, if with everything within you, you come before Him and you start to allow your the passion, you allow the the something of an urgency, God, I need you so desperately. God, I want you in my life. If the Bible says if you diligently, if you really, really go for it, diligent means hard working, showing care, persistent application to work. That's the Oxford Dictionary. To persist, not hot and cold, in and out, up and down. God's either God or He's not. And it says in verse 2, it says, And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Friend, we've got to learn to obey what God says. We can't ignore it. We can't just say it doesn't happen. I'm going to let you read that for your homework. So I'm running out of time. But this is, that's what Jesus wants us to walk in, the blessing, the promise. Redemption really is the ability, everybody say ability, to receive the marvelous transformation that is caused by the greater one now living in me. A transformation. I want to just read another scripture from Revelation. Revelation chapter 3, and I'm going to read verse uh, 30. Or 20, somewhere there. I'll find it. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's the voice in my head. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Then it goes on in verse 21 to say, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me upon my throne, even as I have overcome and am seated. He that's got an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is not an altar call verse for salvation. This is Jesus speaking to the church, speaking to you and I. And I thank God while I've still got breath in my body that where change needs to be changed, I want to change. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me. Friend, there's an invitation that is made 
for you to sit with Him upon the throne. But there's also a responsibility that I have to take to qualify, if I can say it like that, to sit upon that throne. Is that okay to say that? A lot of people can be saved, but I believe that God wants us not just to have a... a thin experience with Him. He wants us to come into the fullness. That's what He wants. That's what Jesus died for, that we might come into the fullness of God. We might know because we know because we know because we know. To Him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me upon my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my Father on His throne. He that's got an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I want to tell you, if ever there's an hour, if ever there's a day that we need to have our ears fine-tuned to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, it has to be in the hour that we're living in today. People don't know who they can trust. For a period of time there, everybody, Donald Trump was going to be the answer. But Donald Trump has just proven how much he's just a natural man. I ought to tell you, friends, don't put your trust in man. Put your trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. He's the only one. Don't put your trust in a church. Don't put your trust in a denomination. Don't put your trust in anything else but Jesus himself. You put your trust in a man, you'll go down. I don't know. I don't believe for one minute that God's finished with Donald he hasn't finished with Donald Duck either, but anyhow. The ability to receive the marvelous transformation. John 15 says that I am the vine, you are the branches. Get plugged into Jesus. Oh, I go to church. I said it the other day. I went to the chook house. I didn't become a rooster. Plug into Jesus. Plug into Jesus. Amen. Disciple is one being taught. Allow the Spirit of God to disciple you. Allow the Spirit of God. You know, I believe in discipleship programs, but a lot of discipleship programs take you in a different direction, perhaps the way God wants you to go. Get plugged into Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. I thank God that when this old sinner walked up and gave his life to Jesus, I became a brand new man. All things were passed away. Brand new man spiritually with the ability to receive all the spiritual blessings. The new birth takes me out of the natural, takes me into the supernatural, takes me out of the kingdom, the natural kingdom into the kingdom of His Son. Notice that a person now is a new creation. He is created in Christ. We are the workmanship of God. Who's going to mold you? Who who wants to make you? Glory to God, friend, don't you rely on me. I'll get up here and I'll spit and I'll shout and I'll jump and I'll do everything I can, but don't rely on me. If you rely on me, I'll let you down. But He'll never let you down. Amen? He will never let you down. He will never let you down. He'll tell you things that I'm not going to tell you. The devil's lies wants to keep us in the flesh. But Jesus wants to set us free. Amen. I have many more things I would like to say to you. (laughs) Friend, be filled with the fullness of God. 
be filled with His fullness. I want to just put out a bit of a challenge today. If you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit and spoken in other tongues, you need to be filled. You need to be filled. If you're somebody that said, I got filled 25 years ago, but you haven't spoken in tongues for six months, you need to get a refreshing. You need to get a refreshing. You need to get touched from God. You need to let the Spirit of God get around our lives. Is anybody here today and you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit? You've never spoken in other tongues? Would you like to? Would you like to? Would you like to speak in tongues? Would you like to be filled with the Spirit? I'd like those ones. You guys come out. Come on. Come on out here. Just don't, don't be shy. I'm not shy. Anybody, come on. There's others. I would imagine there's others. I also want to ask you today, is there anybody here and you really do not have a meaningful relationship with Jesus? You might have said, well, when I was six or when I was 10 or when I was 20, I got so I made a decision. But where is that decision now? Is it still there? Is, it, is there still a fire burning inside your belly? Is there still something there that you know is missing? 